my secret, just do something that ain't nobody ever done before, but make it sound like something that's always been there forever. Welcome to This Filipino American Life, a podcast that explores the nuanced experiences of Filipinos in the United States. At Ibapa, my name is Elaine Delalas, and I'm joined by my fellow co-hosts, Ryan Carpio, Joe Bernardo, and Mike. Producer Mike. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's really that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All We're right. Back. So I did the intro, and what are we going to talk about today, Mike? Uh, so today we're talking about Filipino veterans. Yay. Veterans. Veterans. Just in time for <laughs> Veterans Day. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. I figured it'd be a timely su- subject because um, every Veterans Day, at least here in LA, we have a parade and a march that honors Filipino American veterans, a uh, parade that I used to be involved in. Um, and so I figured, you know, we should have some guests to talk about that and kind of just talk about our own experiences with the Filipino veteran movement and how we understand that and what's going on with that. So that's what we're talking about. Cool. Cool. And we have a T-Fal pan of the episode. Or a T-Pal. Or a T-Pal. Oh, right. Good We've job. We've changed it. You've right? changed it. Yeah. I forgot. Well, it's, you know it's still not T-Fal. T-Fal. No, it's not. Well, T-Fal pan is a reference to the pan. The, the pans. Pan. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. But yeah, yeah but tea pals, pals is better. <laughs> Makes sense. The last person was Vincent B. Thanks, Vince B. And today our tea pal is Marie Lloyd. Wait, we already did. We Marie did that. Lloyd. Oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Today it's Paolo Carpio. Yay, Yay Paolo! <laughs> Wait, is that Apollo related to Ryan Carpio? Uh, yeah, I think he's <laughs> my <laughs> brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi, Paulo. I hope you're having fun playing basketball right now. <laughs> See him on campus and he plays basketball. Yay. But yeah, he's our tea pal of the episode. Cool. All right. I'm All sure right. he'd like that. So I hope you enjoy this veterans episode. And now we're going to talk about our experience with veterans. Well, so yeah, just, just, just taking a step back. I mean, how many of you know about what's going on with Filipino veterans and why we're talking about it? You know, especially for this episode. We were we we're talking about World War Two veterans, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. World War Two veterans. Um Yeah, uh I, I first learned about it when I was in high school and I remember seeing some CNN report um and they were covering the uh the the protest that was going on in MacArthur Park where a bunch of World War Two veterans in their at least back then they were like in their seventies or 80s, and then they were uh, chaining themselves to the MacArthur, uh, Douglas MacArthur um, uh, statue in MacArthur Park in LA. And then um, that kind of got a lot of recognition locally and nationally. Um, some of them went on hunger strikes, and I remember going then, um, they would go to like City Hall, and um, they would talk about their issues and like the whole veterans movement. And that's how I first learned about it. And then when I did research, I just, you know, I did my research and then found out that America didn't give them any veterans benefits that they promised them during World War II. How about you, Ryan and Elaine? So for me, um, I probably learned about it in college, just a little bit uh, tagging along what uh, on what Joe said. Um, but not until, oh, probably when I started working in and around historic Filipino town, did I really understand what the they were fighting about, especially when it came to um, the benefits for uh, World War II vets? And, you know, working with folks who organized uh, in and around uh, the veterans movement. Uh, but that's my, my association with it is really limited. I sort of understood it, but didn't really until a lot later on. So I didn't hear about it in high school, a little bit in college, but... Nothing really that that stood out as for me to to take on as an issue that I was passionate about. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I was I was really very hazy about it until I started working uh, with people like Mike and and folks in the Filipino town area, and that was you know around oh seven oh eight, and then. 
Um, I've known about it since high school, and that's because my little Nando is uh, was a World War II veteran, um, and him. So in our family, on my dad's side, I have a Lolo who was a World War II veteran, was in a camp, and he just so happened to be in the same camp with my Lolo Nando, who's my Lolo on my mom's side, and they were actually friends. And um, my Lolo on my dad's side actually saved Lolo Nando's life by giving him banana peels to eat when they were in <coughs> camp because they weren't getting food when they were in camp. Oh, yeah. So like that's my story and introduction to World War II veterans because my dad was like, you have family that were in camps. They weren't in the Bataan Death March because it was still like I think in Mindanao. But um that is our family legacy with World War II. And then Lolo Nando actually came and lived with my parents when I was in high school. Um because in order to like receive some of their veterans benefits, they needed to be in America for some reason. And so they lived with us and then they said it was too cold, so they moved to the US Virgin Islands because my little Nando had a brother who lived in the US Virgin Islands. And so it was like, oh, I'm still in the US, but I'm gonna be in an island. So he moved there. And then he just didn't like the life that wasn't in the Philippines. So he came to see us for a little bit. And then he and my Lola ended up moving back to the Philippines. And when I call them Lola and Lola, they're like my grand uncle and grand aunt. They mm-hmm. are, they're not like my direct Lola and Lola. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lola Nando used to have, like when he first moved and lived with us, I was like scared because I was like, who's this person going to live with me? And my dad's like, we have to make sure we have corned beef. And um, we have to have pig salmon. And my mom went and bought like real corned beef, like from the grocery store, and then actual salmon, like a fish. And we made it. And my Lolo was like, What is this? And my mom's like, Oh, it's pink salmon and corned beef. And he's like, Oh, but I like the one that's out of a can. Because yeah. in World War II, like those were the things that he ate. <laughs> so I always think of corned beef and hash, like Libby's corned beef and hash, because that was his favorite. And um, and pink salmon out of a can, like just making that with egg, scrambled egg, because that was his favorite thing. Hmm. What about you, Mike? Well, so, I mean, you know, I think at least my grandfather, my mom's side was in the U.S. Navy during World War II. I forget if my dad's dad was an actual soldier or if he was just like, you know, fighting out there like with everybody else. Um, But I didn't know there was like an issue with like what Joe was alluding to earlier about like Filipino veterans and, you know, being recognized in America. I think until, yeah, that same thing at MacArthur Park. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I was in high school too, right? I was in 96 or 97. But I didn't quite understand it. And so like my mom was like, oh, they're phonies, right? And so this was like a common thing amongst yeah. you know, military families was that these veterans who were out there who weren't getting recognized weren't real veterans anyways. Um, wow. wow. <laughs> that was, that's harsh. Yeah. So, that's I mean, I don't think says. I, I don't think I quite understood what it was until college when I went to my first, um, you know, justice for Filipino American veterans March in a historic Filipino town. Um, and I, I think I had heard about it happening the year before. Maybe it was the first one that had happened the year before I went, I finally went to it. Um, and they were just looking for somebody to be a driver uh, to pick up veterans from their houses and bring them to the parade. And so, and I was at UC Irvine, Irvine at the time, so I had no idea what was happening. And so, so I was like, hey, can you drive this van? Can you go to these houses in Filipino town and pick up these people and then bring them to this thing? And then it was just kind of this weird experience. But I mean, that's when I found out that this was, you know, an issue that concerned certain, you know, Filipinos who had fought in World War II. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, my experience with World War II, you know, Filipino veterans was like, I had my grandparents who had one experience and then I started learning about this other experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And the real difference was whether or not, you know, someone had signed up for the US military versus they just fought and didn't, you know, go through the same channels. I mean, it was was a lot more complex than I realized as I learned. Um, But yeah, that there were these Filipino veterans that fought um, and just didn't get the recognition that other Filipino veterans got based upon certain factors and certain things that happened in their history, so. Mm. And were your grandparents like, Assuming they were not part of that group that didn't get benefits, mm-hmm. or is that is that accurate? They got benefits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, and I mean, I guess you could tell the difference by whether or not you know, like people were able to like either get petitioned to come to the states got or it. other things. Got you know, it. I mean, that was part of it too. Because um, I know one issue, and I guess we'll get into this later, is just you know whether or not you know 
people who Filipinos who fought in World War II were able to get U.S. citizenship, whether or not they were able to petition for their families. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this whole kind of complex set of things that happened, whether or not you were recognized by the states as a veteran. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, just to give <clears throat> just folks who don't know the issue a um, little bit of history, um, I'm sure you all know the Philippines was a U.S. colony um, during you know prior to World War II, mm-hmm. and then um, when there was always tension between Japan and U.S. and there was like a looming war going to happen. And then once um, Japan uh, bombed Pearl Harbor and, and invaded the Philippines, um, the U.S. Inst- uh, instigated the war plan Orange, which is basically a strategy where they would retreat. The U.S. forces would gradually retreat from the Philippines, re- get uh, reinforced and get uh, build up the military and then go back into the colony. Um, but in order kind of, kind of to do that, they, they employed or they, they, they formed the U.S. Uh, Armed Forces of the Far East, which is kind of um, basically recruiting all these Filipinos to serve in the American military, the U.S. military. Okay. So, um, some, you know, a lot of them did. A lot of them didn't. They were more like guerrillas or they, you know, they fought in other means. But um, in any case, uh, once World War II was done... Um, in 1946, uh, they, the U.S. passed the Rescission Act, which basically said that these, um, these World War II or these veterans of the war from the Philippines could not get benefits and could not come to the U.S. Because they, when they saw like 250,000 people um, from the Philippines joined USAFE, mm-hmm. um, they said like they would spend millions and millions of dollars just paying for these uh, veterans. And then they also, um, as like a U.S. empire, they they didn't want uh, all these World War II veterans, U.S. Uh, veterans coming to the United States. So that's why they passed the 46 uh, Rescission Act. And then for years, even now, um, all these Filipinos, Filipino Americans and Filipinos and Philippines have been fighting for these benefits. And um, it's become more of a more issue here in the U.S. because more of them have immigrated to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, since the 60s. So Mike brought up that, like, his mom said that, oh, the people who are fighting, like the veterans who are fighting were liars. <laughs> and so um, so my two Lolos were a part of the U.S. Navy, so they got their benefits. But it seems to be the people who were fighting for the be- acknowledgement were the guerrillas. Like, they didn't mm-hmm. get official acknowledgement by the U.S. government, and mm-hmm. that's those are the folks who, was, uh, at least that was what I, what I, my impression was, mm-hmm. um, because my Lola was able to get benefits, like he got education benefits, and he was able to, he got his citizenship, and he was able to come here. Was it because he joined the U.S. Navy? Yeah. So he probably joined it after the war. No, it was or during the during war. the war. But that's it. Might be different from Yusafe. Yeah, yeah, there's a distinction. There's a yeah. distinction, yeah. yeah. So, like, the issues that the the veterans, like, Justice for Filipino-American Veterans, yeah. that they had, like, my Lola didn't seem to have those. He was able to get all the benefits that he was needing. Mm-hmm. And, like, when he came to the U.S. to claim those things, um, my other Lola didn't want to. He was like, I'm fine with my life in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. I don't need to. I, I want to stay here. I'm yeah. Filipino. So, um that was something that I was just like, oh, that's interesting because my, my little Nando, like he didn't try to petition his children to come here. Mm-hmm. Um, he had he had a good life in the Philippines. So I think it's a matter of like, there's probably a issue in terms of like class, class in the Philippines, yeah, right? Yeah. Like um, in terms of benefits. Yeah. yeah. Like who was able to actually enlist and be on that list. And, yeah. But yeah. was the expectation like if you were to get benefits, like you would have to be your in the United States or be a U.S. citizen? Like, if you chose to be in the Philippines during that time, does that... I wonder if that's what made you, like, not receive those benefits. Well, because it was a... It was part of the U.S., right? They were yeah. a colony. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right? And, um... Uh, so, they were able... They were used for their labor to fight in the war, but they not they didn't receive the same benefits as anyone yeah. else. But they were initially promised that yeah. Yeah. by Roosevelt and by yeah. the powers at the time. Yeah. Um, and that's why, you know, one of the taglines for a lot of the conversations around what happened with Filipino veterans is it was just a series of broken promises. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. you know, one of our friends, you know, in college did a documentary called Broken Promises that you should look up and maybe we'll put out the link to that. Christine. Uh, it's on YouTube, Christine right? Arkell, it's on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, it's on okay. YouTube. And Michelle. And Michelle Gutierrez. Yeah. yeah. 
So we, yeah, we'll add that link to the blog post. Yeah. But I think you know the, the the critical thing here is not only was it a broken promise to Filipinos that fought in World War II, um, but there are other people in other countries who fought on the side of the Allies mm-hmm. um, who did receive some kind of recompense of some kind or another. It just is interesting, I think, especially for Filipinos. You know, who was a former colony of the United States, yeah. who sacrificed a lot during World War II, uh, was the one that was singled out. And there's a lot of different conversations around it. Was it whether or not because they wanted their independence? Was it because mm-hmm. the United States didn't want to take on the burden? But then if you compare it to the other burdens they took on post World War II, isn't it, you know? And so there's a lot of different, you know, conversations and arguments about whether or not, you know, it was just kind of maybe even like a revenge for the Philippines wanting their independence, or maybe it was just, you know, they, they didn't want to have yeah that people coming over to the United States. I don't know, mm, yeah. and, and a lot of different theories around that. I don't know if you guys have really dug into that. From yeah. from what I've read, it's <clears throat> it's the burden of paying all the benefits, right? It's like and an then economic burden, right? The economic burden, and obviously the racial burden of allowing Filipinos to to migrate to the U.S. in yeah. those large numbers. Um, there's that, and the fact that uh, Philippines was going to be independent that gave them the kind of out mm-hmm. um to do to pass like a legislation oh, right. like that yeah and um i've heard you know my one of my professors was saying like uh the philippines didn't become free from the u.s it was the u.s freeing free themselves, themselves from the burden of taking care of the philippines yeah so that in that it, sense it was yeah yeah it's and pretty, then they still got all the benefits of being in the philippines because they had like subic and all the yeah. naval bases there yeah. because it's a military strategic area to yeah. have a base there because yeah. it would be like oh we could be hawks in asia yeah and it's it's even more egregious when i, I looked more into like kind of pre-world war ii history the fact that like they didn't the u.s military didn't fortify the philippines as it should because they were afraid of um, the repercussions of uh, you know Japan, mm-hmm. and they they didn't want to seem like they were being hawkish, so they didn't they didn't fortify the Philippines, and then once Japan actually attacked the Philippines, then they, they were like, retreated. Oh shit! Yeah, and then, so then that's, that's when they said, "Hey Filipinos, join the military, defend your islands, because we're not going to do it." Yeah. So whack. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of layers also if yeah, you think about like you know U.S. colonial like policies in yeah. the Philippines from the Spanish American war to world war two and kind of the things that Filipinos were forced to do, were asked to do, et cetera. Um, and so a lot for a lot of Filipinos who, you know, you know, thought, you know, we maybe earned our place in the world by fighting so valiantly during World war two. You think about like the Bataan death march and all the other things. Um, and yet to be told like, we're not going to recognize your service for a lot of Filipinos. I think that's, that's like maybe the ultimate disrespect. Yeah. yeah. You totally. know, in the face yeah. of how much was sacrificed to kind of get to that point. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like, I mean, just recently they were offered, I'm sure Ben will talk about this when we talk to Ben, but like they were recently offered like a lump sum of money. And it just feels like over the past 20 years since they've been the Justice for Filipino American Veterans and the Veterans Campaign in general, like it always had felt like the government was waiting for everybody to die. Yeah. yeah totally. And it was, and it always. Like, I remember when my Lolo Nando died, I went to the JFAV march, and the march was really sad for me, because I was like, I'm here, but then my Lolo's gone. Like, yeah. he's not going to get, I mean, he got his enough of his benefits, but, like, to see, like, Monk Franco and Monk Bing like, still being out there. And Those like, are World War II veterans. They're World right? War II veterans in Justice Philip. The leaders, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're, like, folks that we, like essentially like in our adult organizing like we grew up with them and yeah. like we look up to them and we want them to get some kind of justice like for them to, to still be fighting or at the time like in 2006 and 2007 to be fighting like it was just very frustrating and like Mike and I have a history with Justice for Filipino American Veterans since we did go to those we, in college from Irvine we would go to the marches mm-hmm. it was like an activity for us to do yeah. and um, the JFAV marches seem to I mean I'm our guests will talk about it, but like they were pretty, they're, they're still like sustained by the work of college students, like mm-hmm. student organizing. Yeah. 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 And it was something that I was directly involved with, you know, as one of the organizers for a couple of years. And so this is something that's definitely, you know, close to my heart. Um, and that's why I wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about it for, for this month's episode. And also that we've invited folks over um, who could kind of lay out the kind of the context of what happened, what's happening and what can we do? Cause I think a lot of times the conversations around, you know, we have these marches, we have these events, it's Veterans Day and et cetera. And so 
recognition from within our community is something that we've always managed to somehow, at least in LA, pull off. And I, I think for the for the listeners from other cities, we'd love to hear, you know, how you've kind of understood or encountered kind of what's happened with Filipino veterans since World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, to kind of at least kind of really kind of understand, you know, what is what is what is the next step? You know, um, there's things, some things that are happening this year uh, in terms of you know some recognition, but is that really enough? Um, there was something around a lump sum that Elaine referenced earlier that, you know, is that enough? Um, and what does the pros and cons of things like that? Um, and yeah, is it, is it, is it almost too late or what are our, what is our responsibility, um, as the torchbearers of our community, um, when it comes to talking about things like this that happen, you know, now decades and decades and decades ago. I so. think, oh, I think, um, at least for, uh, for I remember, uh, I was talking to, uh, one of the Philippine consuls, uh, I won't mention his or her name, but <laughs> she said, and it was very morbid. Oh, no. She said, you know, I know it's a really tough issue, but one way or another, it's going to get resolved. <gasps> so, I mean. Yeah. Well, because it's like they're going to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. And I'm like. Oh. That's it. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it sadly is. You know, I think the attitude on a lot of sides of this, yeah. you know, and, and what you said earlier, Elaine, about how a lot of this campaign, at least here in L.A., is driven by college kids. Mm-hmm. You know, that's because it's one of the few things where it feels like everyone has has been able to rally around. You know, there's a yeah. lot of things that happen in the Philippine community that, you know, some folks may feel more or less passionate about. Um, but this issue of our veterans, because, I mean, like you said, I mean, it's 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 our Lolos mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and in some cases our Lolas, um, you know, that, you know if they had to suffer through the things that the leaders of this movement have had to suffer through, you know, years of not being recognized, years of not being able to like secure their family's, you know, immigration situation, et cetera. Um, you know, how would you feel? You know, it's, it's hard to look into the eyes of like some of these veterans and just say, well, I mean, I, I would never say this is going to get resolved one way or another. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah, I yeah. think the thing that a lot of folks who have been involved in this work and we'll hear from them later um, has been, you know, while you while 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 I stand in front of you, we'll find a way to get you justice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I feel like I, I feel like um, folks who are older than us, probably like who grew up in the seventies and eighties, um, a lot of their kind of activism was trying to um, do a lot of social services for the Monum generation, right? Yeah, totally. for a twenty for the, those Filipinos who came there in twenties and thirties, those who were still single, mm-hmm. um, and they were trying to do a lot of. Ser- social services. Yeah, us, I mean, a lot of those ones that were like farm workers and things like that. Yeah, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And in us, kind of our generation, the veterans. It was the, the veterans. veterans. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if you think now, like, uh, no one's really doing anything for the monos because a lot of them passed away. Yeah, but it's more about like just memorializing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just kind of just saddened that like that might be that's going to happen in the future yeah because i remember in college um FOSG, filipino american service group international it's a nonprofit in los angeles incorporated incorporated sorry <laughs> <laughs> um they used, it's just here <laughs> <laughs> whoops it's just here they used to do um a health fair a community oh, yeah, they had like a canned food a drive health, and things yeah. like, like they would do food distribution and then um like do health screenings for the veterans yeah and i would go to that as a college student and it would be hilarious because um during the prostate exam all the veterans would be like no 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 no! i don't need to do that i'm fine i'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, man. and it was just like but uh no mano you should probably this yeah. is important like cancer and they're like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine they would like that would be the one screening they would skip like mm. they would do blood pressure check yeah. and everything else they get their food and then prostate they'll be like out about <laughs> well look at the time <laughs> <laughs> and yeah they're not, they're not even doing that anymore yeah they like, don't do yeah. that anymore I remember when I was working for the city we used to um, yeah we used to go visit the veterans at FOSG at Philippine American Service Group Incorporated and um, this other veterans group I mean if you know all the veterans groups there's all they're all yeah. factions all these different factions but there's this other group that used to meet at the um, Bob Hope Veterans Hall. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, they don't meet anymore. Um, there was one at Angeles Plaza, right? Yeah, Angeles yeah. Plaza. There's one like used to hang out in Luzon Plaza. Mm-hmm. They used to hang out at the McDonald's on Temple yeah. in um, Alvarado. Alvarado. Yeah, yeah. those are just chess. local places here in LA. So yeah, they would play chess. In yeah, those, in yeah, and then um, yeah, and right now, like, what do we do? Like, obviously, we want to do their we want their benefits. Yeah, right for the vote for those. Um, 
who are still alive and there's their uh, widows and wives <laughs> right those folks and then but then aside from that like how else can we memorialize them yeah. yeah um you know within our communities i think the only the only one that they um the only memorial out there is the one in la yeah at lake street park um mm-hmm. The, yeah there's a picture of you yeah <laughs> yeah that was in uh, the book yeah in the filipino americans in los angeles book yeah <laughs> that's right it's joe with hair with hair <laughs> yeah yeah when i was organizing for that monument it was just weird because um when i had the community meetings to kind of discuss it yeah they would like all the veterans would, like argue with each other oh. so, yeah it was just it was hard to kind of just corral them and because <laughs> they would just argue with each other and like one of them just starts yelling and like, I think that's yeah. just naturally a Filipino community. Yeah. <laughs> it should that's be. like it should Filipino be. community meeting one on one. Everyone <laughs> yell. Yes, yes. Then calm down. <laughs> yeah, and then um, but finally, yeah, we we got the memorial the memorial yeah. up, which is it looks cool. good. Check it out. It's good. Hopefully, it remains that way. I know there's some issues about maintenance, but yeah, yeah. So, you know, we have a couple of guests that are going to talk in more detail about you know what's happening both nationally and locally so um we'll be back in a bit cool all right yeah yeah. and we are back yeah we're back from our break hope you enjoyed (laughs) our little break (laughs) i don't know if we have a commercial for that i don't know yet no make one maybe yeah um today we have uh ben de guzman he is a national advocate for Filipino veterans. Um, what's your official title, title, Ben? So I serve on the executive committee for the Filipino Veterans Recognition and Education Project, or Phil Vet Rep, as we call it. I see, I see. And uh, you've been a longtime advocate mm-hmm. and organizer for this issue, and uh, thank you for being on TFAL. Yeah, no, this is great. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, Long time listener, first time caller, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wait? You haven't called the hotline, have you? <laughs> I this think only call. I have I called the hotline. <laughs> <laughs> this is his call right now. <laughs> so, um, Ben, how did you get involved with the Filipino Veterans Campaign? So, um, it's a uh, it's actually an interesting question. Um, so this weekend in NAFA, the National Federation of Filipino American Associations is celebrating its 20th year. And so um, I had just moved to DC at the time and NAFA was forming um, and the veterans issue was gonna be sort of its its premier kind of legislative priority. So um, as a young kind of advocate, kind of just out of school, um, you know, this was my community of, of people um, doing activist work. And so, you know, um, that was when I first got really exposed to the issue. And then a couple of years later, I was doing civil rights work and policy stuff. And, um, you know, the advocates work kind of began to move a little more earnestly back in like 2003. 2002 to 2004 kind of um and then 2006 was when we really began the effort um and the 2006 elections when the democrats took back the senate and the house and um we had champions who were in charge of the house and senate veterans affairs committee so senator akaka um in the senate and uh, congressman bob filmer in the house and so that's when we um started the campaign that ultimately resulted in the Filipino Veterans Equity Compensation Fund that was passed in 2009. So um, that's kind of, you know, the, my history and the work. Hmm. Did you have a personal connection to like ver- um, Filipino veterans? You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, my family didn't really have a lot of um veterans in our family until my twin brother decided that he wanted to go to the Naval Academy. Hmm. So, um, you know, so our veterans, our military story in my family really starts with him. So he is still um, in the Navy and um, I couldn't be prouder of him. Nice. Uh, So uh, who drives the conversations um, about veterans equity at a national level? Um, You know, it's kind of a mix. Um, You know, NAFA um, is ostensibly kind of our leader on some of these issues in terms of policy work. Um, But I think 
you know, NAFA works kind of hand in glove with some of the other policy advocates in D.C. that work on Asian American issues. You know, when I was doing this work, um, I was at, uh, you know, um, what is now Asian Americans Advancing Justice, AAJC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, there's a lot of us who are Filipino who are in D.C., um, you know, who are policy advocates, who work on Capitol Hill, you know, who work at other nonprofits. And so, you know, we know that our allegiances to our community. And so wherever we are, whatever, you know, leverage we can get from our organizations or in our work, you know, we've all, you know, we're all committed to moving our community's agenda forward. And so we kind of do it by hook or by crook. Hey, Ben, it's Ryan. Um, so hey. earlier we were talking to um, some folks in the local, uh, like Southern California, kind of like the movement and, and now mm-hmm. talking in the national kind of movement of uh, veterans justice, et cetera. How, I wanted to focus on kind of some of the victories that we've had as a group of people or Filipino Americans who have organized in the past. I want folks who are listening out there to know the importance of organizing and kind of see what what we've accomplished, some of the benchmarks that we reached. Uh, of course, understanding that there's still a, a larger conversation and a, a bigger fight and big, bigger struggle. But I wanted to get from you a sense of how the, the landscape has kind of evolved throughout the years that you've been involved um, nationally, if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, You know, it's interesting kind of, if you do, if you kind of go through the national, um, you know, federal registry of, you know, hearings and, and, and movement on bills related to Filipino veterans, you can clearly see spikes um, you know, of activity and success of the bills, of the equity bills that have come, that have been introduced over the years. And you can see those spikes directly related to, you know, mobilization, mm-hmm. right? So, it, you know, so in 1997, when NAFA was formed and chapters began to do work locally around this issue, you know, was the first time that there was ever a hearing mm-hmm. on Capitol Hill about Filipino World right. War II veterans, right in the late 90s um and i mean filipino veterans first got citizenship in 1990 that was the first kind of significant policy victory Mm -hmm. but once you know people started to get that sense of success Mm -hmm. around um policy work for veterans you know in the late 90s and 2000s you began to see other victories happen like piecemeal Mm -hmm. kinds of victories for the veterans they got access to veterans clinics they got um you know they got burial benefits um and then you know in 2009 they got the compensation fund and now most recently um you know we got the congressional gold medal for them but i think it 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 really is direct directly related to you know mobilization on the ground like people really feeling the issue um you know national groups kind of help mobilize help catalyze an issue but it's really the local folks that are making the calls to the members of congress that are that are doing the work to kind of push on the ground so um but i think it's directly related to how much interest there is in local communities around the issue you mentioned some of the victories that it's happened um like the 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 lump sum that happened 2009 congressional medal Mm -hmm. of honor um but there, those are also like not, it's not full equity. Um, right. It's, you know, it's partial, you know, partial justice, but it's not full justice and recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are the main challenges to achieving full equity and recognition? You know, the, um, I mean, the, the primary hurdle has always been, um, has always been monetary, you know, the, you know, getting pension, getting full benefits for, um, for the veterans uh, has always, was always, is always going to require, um, you know, pension benefits. So it can't be, you know, the money that's appropriated has to be appropriated in a certain way. It can't be discretionary funds. And so, you know, 
the budget in DC is always a very kind of fraught issue. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, you know, so we, so that's always been the biggest challenge, you know, whenever we've been, even to get a congressional gold medal, right. It's, it's not, it doesn't have any budget attached to it, but that was all, that's always been the first question that we've been asked. Right. And so doing anything more significant uh, that will require a larger budget outlay um, is just going to be a much heavier lift. And um, in this political environment, it's, you know, um, it was, it's always going to be a challenge. And it also depends like who's in Congress, right. And who, who runs the, yeah. 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 No, I mean, when we got the compensation fund, you know, that was when, you know, the Democrats had control of the white house and the Senate and the, uh, you know, and the house. Right. And so even with a lot of the support that Democrats have historically given to this work, um, you know, the best that we were able to do is we passed the full equity bill in the Senate and the House wasn't able to match. So while we were still able to get something done, you know, that's when they decided that um, that it was better for us to get the compensation fund than to than nothing at all. Right. So that's so, so that's when that was passed. Uh, Elaine here. Um, so who have been key allies in legislation? Like who have been key allies in the Senate and the House for pushing things forward? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think a lot of the usual suspects, you know, I mean, California has always been, you know, the California delegation has always taken a lot of leadership. Um, we just lost Congressman Mike Honda, um, yeah. but he was always a real champion for us. Uh, the Hawaii delegation mm-hmm. was always really, ha- has always been really supportive. Um, I mean, Senator Daniel, in a way, um, who passed away, mm-hmm. sadly, in 2012, was always a great champion. And his final chief of staff, Marie Blanco, was actually um, the vice chair for our organization for Phil Vet Rep. So his legacy lives on. Um, you know, okay. Senator Akaka, obviously, when he chaired the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. Um, but you know, it's 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 really been a national effort. Um, Washington State has been really active. Uh, their congressional delegation has always been really has has been historically pr- uh, supportive of us. Um, you know, you've got you know uh, groups. Uh, you know, uh, Congress members in New York, um, Texas has actually been a, a really big surprise for us in terms mm. of our community mobilizing there and, and getting Republicans and Democrats on board. Um, so I think it's actually been a really interesting kind of bellwether for the Filipino American community politically, right? To see, you know, the places where we've known that we've been, but to see new emerging areas of political activism um, in the Filipino community. Uh, we talked about earlier um, about how you know I first I first uh, learned about the veterans issue when I was in high school, and um, that's when a lot of local veterans chained themselves to General MacArthur statue in MacArthur Park, mm-hmm. and they did a whole kind of bus ride to DC after. Um, and then you know years later, they did um, they handcuffed themselves to the White House. Those kind of more um, subversive pr- uh, protests. Uh, do they gain more attention by uh, uh, Congress members? Um, like, how what's your assessment on that? You know, I got to say the the image of our veterans chaining themselves to the White House fence um, is still, I think, one of the iconic and if you'll pardon the phrase, uh, arresting images <laughs> of the equity movement, yeah, right? And yeah. so, you know, we're still, you know, I'm looking at old pictures as we're getting ready for our the Congressional Gold Medal this week. And, you know, you see the pictures, you know, of our veterans, of our activists. Um, you know, I think, I mean, protest culture it has taken on new meaning this year, right? Mm-hmm. In this new political climate. And, you know, I think that our work um, for the Congressional Gold Medal, the the activism kind of took a different tack. But, um, you know, I think it's going to be, you know, our veterans are old now, right? I think it's going to be really difficult for them to do kind mm-hmm. of... yeah you know, to be involved in our street theater at this point. But, um, you know, 
we've done the Filipino American community has done like die-ins in DC on you know for hurricane for TPS for temporary protected status mm-hmm, during mm-hmm. after Hurricane Haiyan. So you know our our community is doing these kinds of subversive you know different kinds of political strategies for public protest, um, but. It'll it'll be interesting, I think, because of the new kind of culture that we're in. You know, um, I was telling people that you know it's it's our new form of exercise. All of the rallies that we're doing in D.C. and all of the races that Filipino veterans have been um, there have been a lot of uh, fundraisers for veterans, like a 5K that just happened this weekend. And so, mm-hmm. you know, that's our new exercise. <laughs> we're running in the streets and we're rallying um, to raise awareness. But you know. I think um, that's it's it's just part of a different culture around political rallies, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. What can local advocates do? You know, people who aren't in DC. Um, what could we do to increase the effectiveness on the national stage? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's gonna take coordination and resources, right? So, you know, LA, LA is, uh, you know. I love you all in LA and to the Filipino American population is really, really critical. Um, and I think we need to make sure that we're working better together around like sharing information, sharing strategies, you know, um, better political information about what's happening. So I think just being in better contact um, and obviously not just in LA all over the country. Um, but it's also going to take resources, you know. I mean, you know, a lot of the other national advocacy groups are are, are better resourced than, you know, than the institutions and organizations that that focus on Filipino Americans. You know, like we don't have, um, you know, we we don't have kind of a culture of giving to these organizations, you know? And so I think we need to make sure that we're supporting, you know, the political work that's happening in our communities. Um, and we need to kind of support it with our, with our time and our talent and our treasure, you know? So, um, so that we can all kind of do the work better all over the country. Cool. Um, I, another question is, I, I know this won't come out till after the the ceremony is happening this week. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us more about that and what's going on? Yeah, so, um, you know, so the kind of culmination of the Congressional Gold Medal legislation that we passed last uh, December is going to be the official presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal uh, that's going to happen um, on Wednesday, October 25th. So we're bringing in you know, around 20 um, veterans and about probably 200 family members and, you know, of deceased veterans and and, and other advocates from around the country, um, you know, to Capitol Hill to for the ceremony that's going to be run by, you know, by the Congress. So, um, and then that night, um, Phil Vett Rep is going to do a national gala celebration. So that's going to be open, you know, tickets are still available, um, but that's going to be available for the entire community to come and give our veterans kind of the public recognition that their service deserves and that, that's been denied to them for so long. So, um, I mean, it's really making history during Filipino American History Month, right. which is why we kind of pushed for them to have this uh, presentation uh, during this time. So uh, so it's exciting. There's a lot of stuff happening um, and there's a lot of work happening. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, our friends are coming into town already and, and we're looking forward to making history on Wednesday. So it's also, is it also a fundraiser? Because I know um, a lot of the veterans have to kind of pay for their own medal. So they- yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, so our, our gala is going to be, is a fundraiser for us. You know, we've got corporate sponsors, we've got individual sponsors, um, you know, but the official legislation um, only calls for the striking of one congressional gold medal that's going to be housed at the Smithsonian, I see. ultimately. So the veterans, you know, um we think that it's our responsibility as a community to make sure that our veterans, you know, get the medal because their service already earned it. <laughs> and so we feel like 
our fundraising efforts are are our effort to make sure that the veterans get the medal that they deserve. So we've made an initial purchase of 1,000 medals, um, and we're building a registry, um, you know, to make sure that the veter- that we're able to allocate medals to certified, you know, veterans who served during, you know, during the war. So, um, so we're giving around, we're giving about 300 of them initially here in DC, and then we're going to be doing regional events around the country kind of moving forward. So, cool. Oh, that's um, cool. But, yep. Is it, um, like, how much does a medal cost? Like, can you sponsor a medal for oh, a veteran, yeah. veteran or something like that? Yeah, so um, a medal costs, uh, so it's a bronze uh, replica of the Congressional Gold Medal, um, and it costs about $52. Mm. So, you know, we so we've, we, you know, can, I mean, we can't say, like, sponsor this particular veteran and give you their name because you know there's privacy issues <laughs> yeah but if- um but but yeah no we're definitely people are definitely giving you know 52 dollars for their lolo they're giving 75 dollars because it's the 75th anniversary of the but on death march uh-huh. um you know like we raised two thousand seventeen dollars um this past weekend um because because it's 2017 and we're making history (laughs) um but yeah no we're uh we're raising money um you know to make sure that our veterans get the get the recognition they deserve if we wanted to like purchase or sponsor the medal like how would we go about doing that yeah you can go to our website um philvetrep.org and uh, you know, click the donate button, and um, you know, and help us, you know, defray the costs for our veterans. So oh, yeah, so it's I all online. Like, it's all on our website. I meant like literally, so, but, yeah. if I wanted to buy one for a veteran that I knew, how would I do? That? Yeah. Like so um, so like I said, um, you know, because we have to make sure that you know we're giving medals to veterans that we you know that we know. We can't give out a medal to, you know, just anyone off the street. So we're building our registry of um, oh. veterans. So everyone out there who's got a Lolo or a Tita or whoever um, should go to our website as well, feltvetrep.org slash registry. Um, and, you know, there's an application and then you email us like scanned copies of, you know, the records that you have. If you've got uh, discharge papers or IDs or military rosters um, and, you know, our, our, volunteers you know vet the applications and then um you know and then from there all of those veterans that are in our registry um are getting the medals that we're fundraising for cool okay i like it any other kind of plugs or shout outs you want to give to anyone oh gosh (laughs) um no just everyone who's made a phone call over the last you know 20 years, 35 years. Fonz has been, Fonz is celebrating its 35th anniversary this year as well. So, you know, everyone who's done, you know, um, work for this issue for our veterans, um, you know, the victory that we're going to celebrate on Wednesday is is obviously for our veterans, but it's because of the work that, that we've all done for them as a community. So um, it's, it, it you know, we're we're already seeing like um, just as a little side note, sorry, um, you know, we did a run through on Friday and just seeing just being so aware of the historic moment that's uh, going to be upon us um, is kind of humbling. So just knowing that it's the result of all of the work that has been poured into this issue over the years through countless activists um, is, is, is kind of a big deal. So um, what we're going to do this week is really in honor of all of their work too. And then where does the, sorry, one more question. Where does the work go after this um, ceremony this week? Yeah, so um, again, like I said, we're going to be looking at um, regional presentations of the ve- of the medals around the country. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of our veterans aren't able to travel, so we want to make sure that we're that our local board members um, are, are helping us to do regional presentations, and then um, and then we're actually going to move to doing starting an educational program. 
you know, so California's state law uh, requires the teaching of Filipino American or World War II veterans um, in the schools. Um, but, you know, we haven't uh, had a we don't have a curriculum yet right mm. so we're working with educators to develop a curriculum that can be used in california and in other states that may want to do this as well so the educational um p- part of our program is the next phase of our work cool well thank you so much ben for joining us here in tfl and for all the work that you've and, done of yeah. course yeah all yeah. the work that you've done <laughs> I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank the, you guys. Yeah. yeah, this is such an important resource for the community, so I'm so glad that you guys are doing this. Cool. Well, thank you so much. and um, Thank so, you. Yeah. And we're back. Yay! Um, Woohoo! Hello. And so we have with us on the mic today, uh, Eddie and Steph, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, everyone. My name is Eddie M. Ghana Jr., current chairperson of Kabata Amakabayan, or KMB Pro People Youth. And one of our main campaigns is JFAV. Yeah, hi. Um, this is Stephanie Sejor, and I am the vice chair of KMB Pro People Youth. All right. And so we brought uh, Stephanie Eddie here to talk about Justice for Filipino American, Justice for Filipino American Veterans, JFAV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think after all these years, I'd have it down, right? <laughs> Uh, just to kind of get a sense of, you know, what are the things that are happening around Filipino veterans, Filipino veteran issues, specifically here in L.A., but just get a sense of you know, how people are organizing around this issue. So why don't you give us a little bit of a background on uh, JFAB and your involvement? Sure. Um, with uh, Justice for Filipino American Veterans, that is a national alliance, and there are actually multiple chapters, not only in L.A., but in San Francisco and now in Nevada. And so with JFAV, when we came on board to help out and assist in Los Angeles, it was around 2012, Mm -hmm. I believe, when we attended our first JFAV march. And from there, we learned about the contributions of uh, JFAV and that organization and what they've done for veterans, such as um, fighting for burial benefits, um, helping to have the Valor Monument in historic Filipino town, um, and uh, having benefits paid at 50 cents to a dollar. Um, so, and also know, knowing that it's not just JFAB, but also their, the work that they do with other um, organizations, community, student, veterans organizations, like the American Coalition for Filipino Veterans with Mung Franco, um, and so, so many others. Um, I guess you say like we're, we're, we're young we're getting into this. Movement. Yeah, and yeah. Sort, of, um, sort of like KMB's role, like in our organization, is sort of to bring out the youth to to this issue. Yeah. So for what example, is KMB? Oh, so KMB is a progressive youth organization that organizes around Filipino American issues, um, local issues, mm-hmm. um, issues concerning the Philippines, as well as around the world. Um, we do a lot of um, workshops with uh, young people. We do a lot of um, direct organizing training. So um, that's where we sort of fit in with JFAV is, is the direct um, organizing and direct action Mm -hmm. Because with the students nowadays, um, it's no longer just like their Lolo, it's like their great Lolo. Right. Um, So there's this generational gap that continues to to widen. Mm -hmm. And so we hope to educate the students. Um, Still, like there are folks that where we talk about JFAB and they don't know what that acronym stands for. Um, You know, like we've been doing it for so long or even like within our own circles, like we know what JFAB is, but there are still like freshmen and sophomores that go into it. I don't know what JFAB is. Mm -hmm. Or they even get this misconception that, oh, JFAB, like, oh, that's the JFAB march. That's a parade. Like, Mm -hmm. or like, it's like just a celebration. Like, no, we're here fighting like for full equity, you know, so to remember like the political aspect to that um, and why it's important to continue on the fight. 71 years, seven justice. Great. So, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things we talked about before you guys got here was, um, you know, our own personal experiences or, you know, connections to Filipino veterans of World War II Mm -hmm. um, and how we got, you know, involved and what, you know, in things like JFAV or at least, you know, getting a better understanding of kind of what those issues are. So, you know, if you two can maybe talk a little bit about that for yourselves. Sure. You want to? Well, sure. I guess, I guess for me, um, my grandfather was a, uh, is a was a veteran, um, but it, he was someone that I never actually met in in real life, and it wasn't something I'd learned about until college. Um, in college, I actually did um, I one of my BAs was in film and media studies, and I did a documentary on on um, 
my grandmother and my mother's immigration stories. Mm. And one of the things that came out was that my grandmother's husband was a veteran and she even still had his old U.S. Army ID with her oh, and everything. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess in a way, getting involved with JFAB, and I didn't get involved with it until um, after college, but getting involved with it was a way for me to sort of feel closer to my grandfather, even though I never even met him. Wow. Is that video still, is it on... Uh like it's not. Online? I have it on um, a CD. So, CD. I, so it's what's still that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> you, you gotta upload that one. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, us yeah. young people don't know what CD. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a film studies major, I did mine on on actual tape. Yeah, VHS. Oh yeah. Not VHS. I did it on video. Video. You did yours on VHS. On VHS. Yeah. I did mine on like a mini tape. Mini tape. Oh, oh, we did I that. that. Yeah. yeah. So fancy. Yeah. Mini DV. Yeah. Mini DV. Yeah. Yeah. Like switch yes. it out and all that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I too that. was a film studies major at Irvine. Oh nice. really? Yeah. Oh hey. Zot, zot. Kindred mm -hmm. spirits. Yeah. Yeah. No laser disc. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll only for karaoke. <laughs> How about you, Eddie? Um, for me myself, I first learned about the issue. Fortunately, when I was in high school in 2006, 2005-2006, um, I was taking Filipino Heritage Studies at James Logan High School in Union City, and I learned about how much we, like us as Filipinos, like are in history, but then are being recognized for uh, our contributions. So I learned about the agricultural workers, and I learned about the veterans, and that was my first exposure to it. Now as a high schooler, I saw that as like as an injustice, but at the time I didn't know necessarily what I could do. Um, so by the time I went to uh, UC Irvine, just my own personal journey, um, I didn't get as involved in the Filipino orgs or anything like that. Um, and then it wasn't until after I graduated, like in 2010, um, then going out into the community with, with spoken word and then meet, you know, meeting Steph and learning about like her, her story, um, that I really find that, that personal tie because I do feel that when I do go to um, Washington, D.C. To, to lobby, that's important that there is, is a voice out there. I mean, fortunately, uh, at USC, able to have, um, how you say, like uh, coverage for my trips over there. And so like for first step to be able to um, advocate for uh, her, her grandfather who never received full benefits. I have a quick question. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about generation gap and a lot of new um, younger college students, they don't have that personal connection to the issue. Like their grandfather is now like their great grandfather or right. not even too young for to even know them. Right. How do you... Um, you know, how do you uh, get them to understand the issue beyond kind of a personal connection? Mm -hmm. I guess um, one of the things we do is that because a lot of veterans still exist in historic Filipino town, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll invite them to meetings so that students can actually meet them face to face. Um, they'll hear mm -hmm. the veteran stories straight from them. So even though maybe there isn't that uh, blood family connection anymore that they might have, um, mm -hmm. we still try to bring that, that personal connection um, by meeting people who are still alive and can tell their stories. Yeah, and right now in KMB, we're working with a group of Claremont College's students, and so with one of the projects is to meet the veterans and record their stories. Now, there's this documentary that's been out called, called Broken Promises that folks here are <laughs> more than We like, mentioned yeah, that earlier. Right, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. familiar with, right? Um, and so we want to then um, create, a, how do you say, not an updated version, but just like a um, to to re record the, the the veteran stories today for those who That's are cool. still alive, mm -hmm. um, and so with with the youth, they're very excited. They want to go meet the veterans um, to see that it's not just a an injustice just on paper. Like these are people's stories. Um, yeah, no, that's great. I think you know we were talking about you know the different generations of activism activism for Filipino Americans and how you know maybe the generation before us was working mm -hmm. primarily on supporting the Manongs, like the mm -hmm. farm workers and things like that. Um, and our generation was looking at, you know, what's happening with Filipino veterans and a lot of that, even at least for me, I think I got to know a lot about that through film and through things mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you know, like the fall of the I hotel, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, documentary and also mm -hmm. broken promises from Christine Arkell, uh, mm -hmm. Michelle Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really valuable, um, to get those stories told and get them on film so that people can mm -hmm. see them. Um, and so, you know. But also, you know, beyond that, you know, how else do you, you know, engage with the community and really kind of more specifically, you know, what does JFAV really do to kind of get the issue out there and get people to understand, you know, why is this something we should even care about, I guess? Mm. 
Um, well, at least also we want to push for lobbying um, mm -hmm. for JFAT. I mean, that's one way to um, get our voices heard. Um, personally, I've been able to go to Washington, D.C., um, but not everyone can go to Washington, D.C., so I want to mm -hmm. focus on local lobbying. And so with this year's uh, working committee for JFAB, we do have a student leader, uh, Andrea Mackey, who's taking lead on that, um, as well as Megan De La Cruz. Um, and so hope to schedule then uh, appointments and just visits where we get to uh, speak about um, the, the, the veterans and how important it is to fight for uh, H.R. 3865, the Food and Veterans Fairness Act. Uh, which has lost um, a lot of uh, co-sponsors over uh, the years. I mean, oh, wow. there, there, there's a victory with the Congressional Gold Medal Act, which was passed um, last year, um, and that's, that's recognition to an extent. Um, but, we're, but for this one, we want to eliminate um, the distinction between the Filipino groups um, and f have uh, the survivor's pension. And that's very important um, because that helps with, with, with health care costs, with living costs, um, which has been a struggle for the veterans that we have been working with, you know, just to get um, by day by day. Um, so with 3865 right now, I believe it's around like 32 um, co-sponsors. Um, you need over 200. And so it's a, it's a long way to go. Um, but do feel re-energized because it just recently got introduced this year. Um, by Jackie Spear. And so to lobby here in LA, um, and then also with JFAB's network, um, you know, in San Francisco and Nevada, and also our Kasamas on the East Coast with Ugnayan Youth for Justice and Social Change um, to show that um, this is a, a national um, issue. So what would 3865, like specifically, what is, what is the, the goal with that and what would it bring that veterans don't have right now? So right now, what it would do is that as it would eliminate the distinction between the Filipino groups, and then it would essentially give full equity, meaning then um, the benefits that are just only given to um, the old Philippine scouts mm -hmm. um, would also then translate over to um, the other groups, such as the Commonwealth Army of the Philippines, um, the Recognized Guerrilla Forces, and the New Philippine Scouts. And we're really just pushing just for the survivor's pension um, for, 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 for that, and that's part of that uh, bill. Um, so survivor's yeah. pension, that's like wives and children? Yeah. Because they are currently do not receive anything. Because, yeah, they do not receive anything as of now. Mm -hmm. um, right now there's only about fifteen to 20,000 Filipino veterans uh, that are left alive, and there are so many uh, widows, um, mm. survivors. Mm -hmm. um, and so where is their justice in all this? Mm -hmm. um, so at least for Filipino Veterans, veterans Fairness Act, it's a step um, towards um, that final uh, right, right direction. Yeah. Great. Uh, one of the other things that we also do is the annual march. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, every year we have it on Veterans Day. Um, and it's been in different places, right? It's been in historic Filipino town. And a couple of years it was in downtown. Now it's in Hollywood. And we felt we feel like just sustaining this march is a way to keep people energized around this issue, but also to bring awareness to it to the general community. I mean, like Veterans Day, a lot of people use it as a day to go out, you know, mm -hmm. have have fun uh we use it as a way to tie in the filipino veterans issue um so there's a lot of people in hollywood that that are out and during the march you know they see a bunch of filipinos in the streets um mm -hmm. chanting and marching mm -hmm. and people will ask you know what it what it's about and um it's it's an opportunity for us to be able to connect with folks who may not know anything about it uh -huh. and we have received mixed reactions um i believe it was about two years ago when we had the march in hollywood and there was this uh family um, who's saying like, why are you yelling out here? Go back to the Philippines, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, not even understanding, you know, these are like uh, veterans who like who fought for uh, America, right? <laughs> um, uh, essentially. Um, so yeah, as Seth was talking about that educational component, um, raising that awareness. That's why it is in Hollywood uh, for that greater visibility. Um, and then hopefully one day uh, when we're able to have full equity, maybe you can bring it back to historic Filipino town and have it be more of a celebration, uh, you know, community fair. Um, I would love to see that happen. I mean, personally, myself, I have I never experienced a JFAB march in Filipino town. So mm, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, uh, since, yeah. since we have some old fogies <laughs> around the table right now, um, I mean, Elaine, Ryan, Joe, if you want to talk about maybe oh, your Oh, he told with. us who the old fogies are. <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly be an old. Because I think you were the first one, right, Elaine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Well, I went to the FOSGI, like I said earlier, I went to FOSGI when it was just like a healthcare fair. Healthcare fair, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've been going since when it was that, and then it transitioned to um, a march in historic Filipino town. I remember um, a 
previous guest on our mental health one, Ernest Tamayo, he was a steering yeah. committee member for the J5 marches back in the day. And it was mm. always his job to get the truck. So there's like oh, a, God, the there's a truck that yeah. um, like a sound system is on and right. then there's people are on it and riding on it. And hmm. um, I would always try and like angle so that I could be on the truck so I could just like lead chance. And also cause I'm lazy and I didn't want to walk. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was always fun in historic Filipino town because like um, you can like walk and see the neighborhood or see the neighborhood in action. And then um, folks at like adult day health cares in the neighborhood would like come out and wave. Aww. So that was cool. And then like local neighborhood folks would, be like a part of the march back then so there was a year when um al garcia one of the lead um right. uh, yeah. organizers and lobbyers he had like a heart attack and so he couldn't participate in the in the veterans march that year I didn't know that. and then um <laughs> but then we uh saw him in the street like we were walking we were doing the march and then all of a sudden al's like coming out and like waving hmm. oh, and we wave oh. at him and then all of us are like shouldn't you be at home <laughs> like you're not you just you like he had just had a heart attack that week <laughs> oh my gosh and he was out and all of us are like mm, that's not a good idea get some sleep out yeah yeah, yeah. that does sound like al though like fighting does. spirit yeah, yeah. Really he'll just go out there yeah, yeah. Um, it's very great when he gets to speak with the students. The students love Al. They do. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, as an old fogey, I remember doing a couple of the 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 events um, that culminated at, at the where the World War II Veterans Memorial is in Lake Street Park that Joe was project manager for. Um, but I was really inspired to see a lot of, and at that time I wasn't as old as I am now, but <laughs> there's a lot of young people that come out. I didn't I didn't know who was behind the organizing of jfav until i actually saw it mm. and i or at least in historic filipino town i didn't know how many college students were involved mm -hmm. and and i think i was giving out certificates or something like that to some of the organizers and i was i was really amazed at the amount of people that were there um from different universities and you know who traveled far and and it wasn't friendship games you know and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't sports fest you know local or references yeah. guys. Right. sorry <laughs> but you know like it was it was something for for a cause that 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 was really that was really um a, an eye-opening experience for me as a person who didn't really know anything like that uh or, nor did i participate in anything like that when i was in college um at least not not for veterans, you know. Mm. So it was nice. It was good to see. I was um, it was impressive. I, I you know, we uh, we did some uh, some good work. I think like some or the the folks that organized did some great work on on it. Mm. And it was something that we continued to to do for a few more years. And I, I know Joe was there during the building of the memorial. So mm. I kind of wanted to hear from you how how that was like in the experience of that combined with. Um, the activism around um, uh, the veterans, the Fili Filipino American veterans. Um, <clears throat> I think my role was kind of just doing all like the <clears throat> logistical things with the city to make it happen. Mm. Um, and then my other project was doing the Filipino Veterans Memorial. And then it was a it was a tough. Um, I think that was the duration of my time with yeah. uh, the city. It took four years to build that thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, we finally, it culminated in uh, at um, uh, 2006 Veterans Day, the parade. Yeah. And then uh, that was the first time we unveiled it. And that was, that was probably the most attended I, I think I've seen. Is that the one mm. where the shirt is the light green with long pooping <laughs> on You remember by shirts? It might have been that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> That used to be a thing. Was like we have a different shirt every year, and, I think and, and Mike, year. We, we still do. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and Mike used to design a lot of these shirts. Like oh, four yeah. of them. Maybe. Oh wow! I would love to see those. <laughs> yeah, me too. I have an archive somewhere. But yeah, I think it was uh, the sad part is like a lot of the times where we used to have those community meetings with the veterans, like and just more and more news comes out that they pass away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and like uh, Mong Pei Ping, of course. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, um, not Cesar, but oh, let's forget his name. Franco Arce Arcebal. Mang Franco. Uh, is so not, not Frank. That's Frank. There's another one. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, another one. Like, no, no, he's still alive. Still alive. alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still alive. yeah. Dominador Cabatu. That was one veteran. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just remember them, and they would come to my the, the meetings, and like, 
Yeah, and then now you want to hear that they pass away. It's just really sad. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets harder. I mean, today there's a there was an event at Cal Poly Pomona, their heart to hearts event, and we had uh, Mong Rufiniano de Castro. Uh, and he, uh, at first, he was like, "Yes, I, I will be there." He loves to speak with you. He's like, "The student's gonna be there." Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> um, and then he called me um, the the next day and told me that his doctor recommended for him not to go, you mm. know, due to the travel. So it just speaks to the the, the health conditions, you know that. Um, the veterans have and it makes it harder and harder for them to to, to get out um at least at least with that um for any of the students that are listening i would recommend to go to the veterans right and have the veterans go to you um, yeah to, to help out so that's people. why you're doing like the story like the recording project right to yes get those yes. stories mm -hmm. yes to record the stories as much as possible do the veterans still participate in the parade itself or in any of the advocacy activities or um well i mean last year yeah, we had rufiniano as i said it's, yes. it's harder and harder um the year before that we had about five veterans and plus um the widows and also uh family members uh of veterans yeah but as you know as the years, um, go, years go by, go by mm -hmm. yeah. it gets harder and harder for them to come out yeah yeah um but like with our committee this year um you know, we continue to push like, okay, we need to mail, <laughs> we need to like mail letters out to them because you know they don't have like email or things like that. Because I talk to some of the students and they're like, oh, well, what is um, the veterans' email? What's their email you know? list? <laughs> right, you know, they don't, wow. email. They, don't you know they don't have that, not necessarily. So we're know? doing a lot more, yeah. Like Eddie said, emailing them door -to -door invitations, knocking. yeah, going door to door, doing a, a lot more face to face work with them. Um, is mm -hmm. Some of the work that's re that's required. Yeah, letting the students know like that needs to be done. Right. Yeah. So what has been the response? You know, you talked about some of the advocacy work you've done in dc and in locally so what is what is the response from you know lawmakers when you when you bring this topic up because i mean i imagine for some of them they've heard this time and time again right and have you know had different levels of either support or whatever regarding you know whatever it is that needs to be done i mean right. what, what has been the response as of late i guess um so when i speak with congresspersons i mean for for this year with the Fil philippine veterans fairness act it's all supported by uh democrats last year there was uh, one uh republican um but when i would speak to e either party um they would mention um so how uh how, how much would this uh, cost per se mm. you know um and how we uh address that is that we talk about there are only about 15 20 000 left 10 um veterans uh, are, are dying like per per day um, at the at the end of the day, um, there won't be many left, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and so, with the survivors' pension, it'd be about two thousand um, a month, uh, and the budget would be about six hundred uh, million. Um, and so, w with that, just 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 pushing for it, um, it would be on the duty of the, the the lawmakers to put that in place. And with the veterans passing, uh, you know, um, e every day. Um, it'll be less and le less money, so like let let less strain. I I guess you you could say it's very hard. Like, yeah. It's horrible. With Republicans about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and Democrats. Too. I mean, like Democrats, they need to talk about the social injustice and like the racism. Um, but you know, it's a also as KMB, we don't endorse any political party or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but lobbying is like one way to get um justice at the policy level. Yeah. Are all Democrats for this, or is it? Well, sense. I mean, like with this current bill, there's 32, uh, 32. There 32 uh, endorsers, and yeah. they're all Democrats. They're all Democrats yeah. right now. Wow. Right. So how about the rest of them? They're just not. They still know. They don't. Um, I think a mix of both. A yeah. Of both. I mean, there's uh, some folks like who are either not familiar with the issue or folks who did endorse in the past but haven't. Um, maybe because of, um, I don't know, the, the the less support over the years, just education. Like where where is it at now? Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it got the highest support. When was it? Uh, in the 97, 98. Oh, wow. That was probably there, right after the MacArthur yeah. part. Yeah, and it was, um, we only needed about maybe like three or four more um, co sponsors. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize we were so close uh, back then. Yeah, it was, it was very, very really close, close that year. That year. Um, and I could also imagine too, it was very close that year too, because a lot of the events were active still. I mm -hmm. believe like, yeah. like Mom Ping was still alive. I, I wish I, I could have met Mom Ping. You know, I hear so much about him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as we were talking about earlier, it, just, it gets harder and harder with um, the veterans and they're not able like to go out, um, you know, and, and advocate. So that's why, you know, we, um, we record the stories and, you know, get, get the youth to carry yeah. on that legacy. That's when they, they chained themselves to the mm -hmm. White House. Mm -hmm. Remember that, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So... Yeah. So I mean, in light of all that, then I mean, I think you know, what is, who are who, who? What is the most effective way? Would you say, other than that, you know, for for people to get involved? I mean, we've mentioned the march. We've mentioned that level of advocacy. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do to kind of at least get people educated and get people to kind of you know at least remember, you know, if not actively participate in kind of this work? You know, what are the best avenues? Hmm. Let's see. 
Well, what are your counterparts in like San Francisco and Nevada doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, well, in JFAS San Francisco, um, Ago is our main contact there. And so he works at um, a center. You may know Ago. I'm not sure if you, you've met him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have. Um, yeah. You have, yeah. Um, and so he has um, like direct access to the veterans there. So, like what last center? year. Um, I can't recall the name off the top of my the head. Filipino um, Equity Center yeah. or something, something like that. that. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like last last year, for example, like the work we do with these folks is, um, they actually we were able actually to get them on a call with they. So they had an event in conj- at this happening at the same time as our march. So we were able to get on a call with them, and they were able to speak. Oh, to I our, remember to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was at the beginning yeah. of the march. Yeah, at the yeah. very beginning of yes. the march. Yes, yes, to show that you know it's not just in LA. You know, it's in San Francisco. And so, like this year, I also want to get um, Ugnan Youth for Just Social Change um, in, in New York to to somehow be um, in solidarity with this march. So at the same time, it's like okay, in New York, this is going down. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Seth was talking about with that. Um, with there was a ceremony giving uh, medals to the veterans there. Oh. Um, yes, in recognition of their their sacrifices. San Francisco Veterans Equity Center. Veterans uh, Equity Center. Thanks, yeah. Joe, for thanks. looking that up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, G. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alta Vista. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know, you mentioned medals, and you also mentioned the Congressional Gold Medal. Yes. Um, what is what is that all about, and how do you feel about that? Well, with the Congressional Gold Medal Act, it is still partial equity. Yes, it is recognition, but also looking at the medal itself, it is, it is one medal that will be displayed in Washington, D.C., and the medals are that could be given to the veterans that have to be paid out of pocket. Um, it is also bronze replicas. Um, so then putting, again, the burden on our own community to then fundraise like for these medals is supposed to then recognize. Like, No, it should be like our, our, our government that should be recognizing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we're, we're fighting for. And now right. here's like, oh, okay, you could have a Mon Franco pay out of pocket to <laughs> right. get him his own self like right. recognized it's like, like getting a class ring or something yeah. like that yeah. that sucks yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. never like got a class buying ring buying your own recognition yeah, that's um. and they say congressional gold medal but it's a bronze replica I mean even that like you know it's like <laughs> yeah. you get like the, the second hand so is that is this I mean I don't know so Mike you, your dad's in the military and he has um ribbons and whatnot like Mm -hmm. did he have to buy those or pay for those or how does that work (laughs) normally oh yeah do you know i mean they have the ceremonial one and then they have the other ones they buy for okay yeah i mean so there is a ceremonial one that like yeah should be given to them not purchased no yeah totally okay and so i mean Mm -hmm. i think yeah and i think that's it's it's kind of like a metaphor for how filipino veterans have been yeah Mm -hmm. treated and recognized all along or lack thereof a recognition right is that Mm -hmm. you know we've had to kind of fight for every piece and you know, it still feels like a lot of half steps and half measures, but, um, you know, there are folks out there who are glad at least some recognition is happening, but yeah. as, as you have said, it's not quite the level of recognition that, you know, many of us feel like they deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like in D.C. at the Veterans Memorial, um, like there's there's like a pillar or whatnot for every state. And then there is one for the Philippines, which I always remember thinking like, mm. so the Philippines is there. Like they're mm. acknowledging that we are a part of oh, the World War II Memorial. The World War II yeah. Memorial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember oh, years yeah, ago, yeah. maybe in 2007, when we were there, they were they had this thing where um, there were cards that you could put your a name of a veteran there and i was like i in 2007 i was like we need to take all these cards back and then bring them to la so like all the filipino american veterans fill them out and then but it's weird because it's just like it's just your name it's a listing of a name a listing yeah it's a website somewhere i think uh, of like that that they were veterans so it's kind of still the onus is on the veteran or like the family to to acknowledge, to put their name in a hat, basically, so it'll be seen, mm. as opposed to the government just like acknowledging that they did their service. Mm. Yeah, and mm. you know, um, for example, like when, like in two thousand nine, for the, I think Obama put out the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, and in that, veterans were able to get access to a lump sum. 15,000. 15,000, 15, right? Yeah, 15,000. Well, 9, I think over half, how many? Yeah, over, half. over half were denied yeah. because Ooh. they didn't have things like pap- the right paperwork or whatever, like things to prove that they were veterans. And so mm-hmm. um, even um, when something comes out that could help them, it's like there are all these barriers. That and I think part of the, and like kind of the fine print of that, mm-hmm. of the yes. act is saying that like, 
you get this lump sum and you can't lobby for anything yes. anymore. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the quick claim. That's actually yeah. one of the demands that uh, we have for this year's March. That if they got... To remove the, the quick claim. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if they got That's the lump sum, they will still be able to fight for... Recognition. It's like you get the money, but then you gotta be that's quiet. It? That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's not even like... like lump sum is not even like... like no, that's yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's nothing, nothing compared to how much they're Ooh. owed. That was in 2009? Yeah. 2009. Yeah. That's really interesting because wasn't it when Obama spoke at Miguel Contreras? What year was that? Was that 2008? I Probably when he was lobbying. When we went to lobby. No, it was, like, was, it was right, when, right oh, after he became... Right after he... When he first spoke in LA, right after he became president. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Because me and Elaine were there, yeah. Because Mike won the lottery that year. And what? We, no, the... Yeah. What? You won the Wait, lottery? You won the lottery? <laughs> Hold up. The lottery to see Obama. The lottery to see Obama. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's what okay. they say. Why am I still I working? Like, what the hell? Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I won, you wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, no, uh, oh, that, oh bring, that's the same thing. Yeah. You know, winning the lottery to <laughs> well, I, bring it, I bring it up because you're saying 2009. And um, mm-hmm. I remember when, when Mike won the lottery to see Obama, um, we had written these let or JFAV and I think a firm at the time mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. written letters to give to the president. President, mm-hmm. and then mm. I remember him walking by, and Mike was holding the letters out, and I remember yelling at Obama like, "President Obama, we have letters for you. Yeah. We have letters yeah. for Justice Filipino American veterans." And he just was like shaking hands and like moving along, right. but I was just like, yeah. "Grab these letters." <laughs> he like completely ignored it, and I was like, "Oh, like he's really gonna take these letters from the public?" Did, Who did knows go to like a staffer or like no? Service? We should have gone to you, Ryan, because I think you were there. I'm not a staffer of a <laughs> president. Obama. Didn't you? Didn't you drive in his motorcade, Ryan? I will not talk about this did? because. What? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember, like, being so sad that we weren't able to get the letters to Obama. But if he was working mm. on, he m- it might have been like protocol. You can't take anything from the audience anyway. What else would he have read it? I guess. I, mm. You never know. He might have. They don't read. <laughs> He had that folder. <laughs> you look at me like, mm. hey, I actually know somebody whose job was to put together the folder. Yeah. And it's up to them to like make them read that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Joe, Joe and I put together a lot of folders. <laughs> this is a little revealing of what their experience was in politics. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, you, you mentioned can be Kabatang Lakabayan yeah. and kind of your involvement with that and how that kind of bridges into JFAB. But I mean, you know, for, for KMB and for, I guess, the larger Filipino-American community, you know, how does this really connect with kind of maybe even some of the larger issues that we, we should be concerned about or organizing around? I mean, mm. you know, is this something that stands alone or is this something that's kind of, you know, emblematic of something else? Mm. Um, I think with any issue, like, I think all these issues that like affect our, that they're all part of this greater system that oppresses mm-hmm. our community, right? Mm-hmm. So when you look at something like this, it's the Rescission Act of 1946 that removed these benefits. And it's just um, one instance of systemic racism, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Racism that has excluded exclusively Filipinos from receiving um, military benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, I feel like it's just one example and it's, um, um, yeah, part of part of a greater problem that we're we're trying to address. Yeah, like that's the reward for the veterans, like for fighting against fascism, is racism. That's what the Rescission mm-hmm. Act of 1946 mm-hmm. is. I also want to clarify too that we're not asking to uh, reverse the Rescission Act of 1946. Um, that you know to, to to say that and like to have it be retroed is unrealistic. That's why we're pushing for the survivors' pension and for mm-hmm. it to have it start starting uh, when 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 it does get get passed. Hopefully, get passed one day. Um, you know, that's also like what I experienced talking with congresspersons who say like, oh, do you want to like go back to like to 1946? And like to think about that, um, that would be, um, yeah, it, w- it wouldn't be possible like with the, the, the current budget. Mm-hmm. Um, but as, yeah, as I was talking about, yeah, just like that long history of racism um, right. towards um, our people. Because um, even last year there were some students. So it, the march last year happened right after the election mm. so there were still like a oh, lot yeah. of like tensions high yeah. and we were doing some like not my president chants and things like that mm-hmm. and there were some students who were like kind of on edge 
Um, because mm-hmm. and like later they were like, let's not make this political. This is a political it's action. Like, this is a political march. Of right. The- yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. So I want to yeah. clarify: it's not a spot where you just do Snapchat and you do selfies. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, we're here to get full equity. Right. You know, for right. Mang Franco, for uh, Mang Rufiano. Yeah. For Mang Johnson. And then to sort of think about presidents, it's like it's a president that signed this act that mm-hmm. that took away benefits. Yeah. You know? yeah. So. I think it, we were at that march um, last year, and I, I sat in the cheap knee the whole time because I'm going to do that. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, breathe in all those diesel fumes. Um, and I just remember a lot of folks in the public, like not uh, participants, I think they really thought it was like an anti president. Um, March mm-hmm. um, because a lot of, I think a lot of actions were like happening. a lot of actions were happening and yeah. I think people like Joe Schmo coming out of the street they were like well, what's this it's like it gets, of course it's against you know the president mm. and um, I think there was a lot of education happening that that at that March just because a lot of the emotions were so high and mm-hmm. raw at the time and I think that's disappointing that the college students would think that it wasn't a political action because yeah. that's what it's been and everything right. that JFF has done is a yeah, political I think yeah. that's always been kind of the conversation ever since it even began was that you know on the one hand and this is why I think it was important that it started in Philby Town is it was mm. if anything it was our way of creating recognition for our own veterans right but mm-hmm. as it transitioned yeah. to really kind of even more dire situation than it already was when it started Mm -hmm. you know people realize you know if we're gonna have political action happen um, this needs to be a primarily political event and it's not just something that we do to kind of celebrate and honor the veterans but we can best celebrate and honor the veterans by bringing this message to kind of the greater public Mm -hmm. you know because at one point it ended at the federal building in downtown and then another point then moved into hollywood which is where it is now and so i think you know that's been kind of the evolution at least from 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 the inside and then the outside for me at least is that you know, on the one hand, you know, getting our own people educated has been enough of a struggle, but, you know, what's the best way to serve the needs of the veterans now is to make sure that the things that we need to have passed get passed Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that the people who aren't paying attention are the ones that we are kind of most in the face of, I guess. Yes. And so, Mm -hmm. and I guess with that being said, you know, with the, with the, Pray coming up, you know what's what's the the date and I guess the theme or if anything of, of this the coming date. up uh, March. The date is on Veterans, Veterans Day. Day, Veterans Day, November eleventh, uh, twenty seventeen. Um, we're gonna meet at Hollywood and Ivar. So we're calling all youth, uh, educators, community activists, allies, comrades, colleagues uh, to please come through. Um, again, we're meeting in the heart of uh, Hollywood, um, and uh, the meeting time is at ten a.m. Um, and I just want to also acknowledge the different organizations that are part of it. I mean, we're here talking about KMB, but this is not just a KMB's campaign. Um, you know, we have FOSGI, we have PASS, we have Barcada, Lacoste Mentorship, Kasama, Kappa Psi Epsilon, Kappa Bayan, uh, Alianza, uh, Kalahi, so many like student and community organizations. And it's with uh, everyone's help that we're able to push through and continue the organizing that you all folks have, have helped, um, you know, um, to, 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 to start. Um, and, you know, Seth and I, we only hope to uh, continue until we do get full, full, full equity. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess other plugs, um, hashtags. Um, yeah. <laughs> hashtag JFAF17. Yes. Hashtag JFabulous. <laughs> J-fabulous. Oh, yeah. Yes. We've been student. Yeah, the students, students like, oh, were yeah, that one. And also hashtag 71, get, get it, it done. done. Get it done. <laughs> um, you can endorse the march at bi, yeah, bit.ly slash JFAF17. Um, you can follow um, JFAF uh, USA. Dot org. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. their website. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So save the date, and we'll we'll see you there. Last year we had eighty endorsing organizations. We're hoping you know to push through and reach reach a hundred. So do need your support. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Mm-hmm. We'll put out those links on mm-hmm. the blog for sure. Cool. I think I just want to do a shout out to um, Romel Canare because he was back in the day on the trucks with me, and our <laughs> favorite mm. chant to say together every year was "Don't say no, no yeah. to my Lolo." Still and I favorite. think Still I favorite. think Romel was the one who created that song. It was either him or Antonio. Yeah, like it's, so. The fact that we still do that chant in the march is their legacy. So I want <laughs> Romel or Antonio, but I'm gonna claim Romel because he's my boy. Antonio, you're my boy too, but Romel and I used to always be on that truck together. We did it like two years in a row we were together, and we mm. would always do this chant. Nice. And so, don't say no, no to my Lolo still makes sense, and mm-hmm. um, I think that's something we should still continue. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, shout out to all the old organizers, you know, yes, definitely from yes. Let's name them John all. Eric, Christine, <laughs> hey, you know, Emily, who yeah. I think is still involved, Emily yeah, Chan, yes, 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 Ernie Tamayo, who's a past guest, Ernie. Uh, Janice, this, mm-hmm. Janice, oh, yeah, Janice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. so many people who've kind of, it's al- it's almost as if JFAB has been kind of, you know, not, I don't want to say a rite of passage, but definitely Mike something Pedro. that, my Pedro, yeah, yeah Mike people Manalo have like, Pedro. you know, yeah. taken on in like different levels. Um, Paulo Espiritu. Paulo. Oh, God, Paulo, that's right. Uh, Don't forget your roommate. <laughs> former roommate, Paulo Espiritu. <laughs> Clipper fan, Paulo. Uh, oh. I roll, I roll. What? what? <laughs> Leave him alone. But no, I think, you know, the reason we wanted to talk about JFAV and Filipino veterans in particular is because, I mean, a lot of us, you know, have, have, have you know, worked on these, these campaigns and it also has been a way for us to kind of get a better understanding of how do we engage in a lot of these issues that affect the Filipino American community. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also hope that this is something that people continue to, to fight for. Uh, I mean, the hope is that at some point we do get that justice and equity, you know, at some point, so we don't have to do these things and so that the parade can yeah. be a celebration again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but until then, you know, we, we really, you know, thank you guys for your work. Um, and, you know, however we all can help as a community, you know, mm-hmm. definitely we're here for that. Oh, for and sure. as Al Garcia says over and over, <laughs> What did you say? He says, old soldiers never, never die. die. Yeah. Old <laughs> soldiers <laughs> never <laughs> die. Yeah, never they die. just fade away. <laughs> no, he says, oh, I know. we want equity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shout out to Al Garcia. Up, Al? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I bet you don't know what a podcast is. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm going to send it to him on his Facebook Messenger. All right. Yeah, yeah. So anything else, guys? Anything else you want to say before Ryan, we sign up? Joseph. No. Great job. Yeah. yeah. Thank right. you. Keep it up. Well, thank you, Eddie. Yeah, thank, you, thank you all. Thanks for yeah, having us. Team on the good work. This Filipino American Life is produced by Michael Nailat. Our intro and outro music is by Roger Habon, a.k.a. 10.4 Raj. Resident reality checker Gurley Collado. Legal advisor Rianne Fajardo. And graphic design by Vincent Collier.